Hi everybody! Welcome back! I hope you're having a wonderful day. And uh, today I thought it would be fun to talk to you about reading to our pets. This is Memphis. Hi Memphis! Can you say hi to everybody? Yeah! He's such a good boy. He loves to be read to. Um, Memphis or Aubrey will lay on Memphis's bed and read to him sometimes. So I thought he could join us today. Yeah, the kid. I thought he could join us today. Lay down. Lay down. Good boy. Oh, you're going to get snuggly. I thought he could join us today for our story, if that's cool with you guys. And maybe you want to call your dog over and um, they can hear the story. And if you don't have a dog, you could bring um, a stuffed dog today. Um, and they could listen to the story, but we, um, I know in class we have our little stuffed reading buddies, but now that we're home, we can read to our real live breathing reading buddies. So, are you cozy, Manthe? Are you cozy? Are you happy, boy? Okay, well, let's get started with the next chapter. The Long Rifle. Every evening before he began to tell stories, Pa made the bullets for his next day's hunting. Laura and Mary helped him. They brought the big long handled spoon and the box full of bits of lead and the bullet mold. Then while he squatted on the hearth and made the bullets, they sat on each side of him and watched. First, he melted the bits of lead in a big spoon held by the coals. When the lead was melted, he poured it carefully from the spoon into little holes in the bullet mold. He waited a minute, then he opened the mold, and out dropped a bright new bullet in onto the hearth. The bullet was too hot to touch, but it shone so temptingly that sometimes Laura or Mary could not help touching it. Then they burned their fingers, but they did not say anything because Pa had told them never to touch a new bullet. If they burned their fingers, that was their own fault. They should have minded him, so they put their fingers in their mouths to cool them and watched Pa make more bullets. There would be a shining pile of them on the hearth before Papa stopped. He let them cool, then with his jackknife, he trimmed off the little lumps left by the hole in the mold. He gathered up the tiny shavings of lead and shaved them carefully and made again the next, and, and melt to melt again the next time he made bullets. The finished bullets he put onto his bullet pouch. This was a little bag which Ma had made beautifully of buckskin from a buck Pa had shot. After the bullets were made, Pa would take out his gun from the take down his gun from the wall and clean it. Out in the snowy woods all day, it might have gathered a little dampness, and inside the barrel was sure to be dirty from powder and smoke. So Pa would take the ramrod from its place and under the gun barrel and fasten a piece of clean cloth on its end. He stood the butt of the gun up in a pan on the hearth and poured boiling water from a tea kettle into the barrel into the gun barrel. Then he quickly dropped the ramrod in and rubbed it up and down, up and down, while the hot water blackened with powder smoke spurted out through the little hole which the cap was placed, on which the cap was placed when the gun was loaded. Pa kept pouring in more water and washing the gun barrel with the cloth on the ramrod until the water ran clear. Then the gun was clean. The water must always be boiling so that the heated steel would dry instantly. Then Pa put a clean greased rag on the ramrod, and while the gun barrel was still hot and greased, it was well on the inside. With an outer, with another clean greased cloth, he rubbed it all over outside until every bit of it was oiled and sleek. After that, he rubbed and polished the gun stock until the wood of it was bright and shining too. Now he was ready to load the gun again, and Mary and Laura must help him. Standing straight and tall, holding the long gun upright on, on its butt, the Laura and while Laura and Mary stood on either side of him, Pa said, You must watch me now and tell me if I make a mistake. So they watched very carefully, but he never made a mistake. Laura handed him the smooth polished cow horn full of gunpowder. The top of the horn was a little metal cap. Pa filled this cap full of gunpowder and poured the powder down the barrel of the gun. He shook the gun a little and tapped the barrel and tapped the barrel to be sure that all the powder was together in the bottom. Where's my patch box? He asked then, and Mary gave him a little tin full of little pieces of greased cloth. Pa laid one of these bits of greased cloth over the muzzle of the gun, 
put one of the shiny new bullets on it, and then, and with the ramrod, he pushed the bullet and the cloth down the gun barrel. Then he poured, then he pounded them tightly against the powder. Which he hit, when he hit them with the ramrod, the ramrod bounced up in the gun barrel, and Pa caught it and thrust it down again. He did this for a long time. Next, he put the ramrod back in its place against the gun barrel. Then, taking a box of caps from his pocket, he raised the hammer of the gun and slipped one um, of the bright caps over the pillow, oh, excuse me, over the hollow pin that was under the hammer. He let the hammer down slowly and carefully. If it came down quickly, bang, the gun would go off. Now the gun was loaded and Pa laid its hooks over the door. When Pa was at home with the gun, when Pa was at home, the gun always lay across those two wooden hooks above the door. Pa had whittled the hooks out of green stick with his knife, and he had driven the straight ends deep into holes in the log. The hooked ends curved upward and held the gun securely. The gun was always loaded and always above the door so Pa could get it quickly and easily any time he needed a gun. Excuse me. Allergies. When Pa went into the big woods, he always made sure that the bullet pouch was full of bullets and that the tin patch box and the box of caps were with it in his pockets. The powder horn and a small sharp hatchet hung at his belt and he carried the gun ready loaded on his shoulder. He always reloaded the gun as soon as he had fired it, for he said he did not want to meet, the tr meet trouble with an empty gun. Whenever he shot a wild animal, he had to stop and load the gun, measure the powder, you know, it's okay. Uh, uh, enough. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. He's going to go check it. Lots of families are going on walks because it's such a beautiful day today. So he's, <laughs> I think he's a little jealous. He wants to go on a walk. Memphis, come on. Okay. That's enough. Lay down. Lay down. Good boy. Okay. When Pa went into the big woods, he always made sure that the bullet pouch was full of bullets and that the tin patch box and the box of caps were with it in his pockets. The powder horn and a small sharp hatchet hung at his belt and he carried the gun ready loaded on his shoulder. He always reloaded the gun as soon as he had fired it, for, he said, he did not want to meet trouble with an empty gun. Whenever he shot a wild animal, he had to stop and load the gun, measure the powder, put it in and shake it down, put it in the, put in the patch and the bullet and pound them down. And then he had to put a fresh cap under the hammer before he could shoot again. When he shot a, at a bear or a panther, he must kill it with the first shot. A wounded bear or panther could kill... <laughs> could kill a man before he had time to load his gun again. But Laura and Mary were never afraid when Pa went alone into the big woods. They knew he could always kill bears and panthers with the first shot. After the bullets were made and the gun was loaded, came story time. Tell us about the voice in the woods. Laura would beg him. Pa crinkled up his eyes at her. Oh, no, he said. You don't want to hear about the time I was a naughty little boy. Oh, yes, I do. We do, said Laura and Mary. So Pa began. The story of Pa and the voice in the woods. When I was a little boy, not much bigger than Mary, I had to go every afternoon to find the cows in the woods and drive them home. My father told me never to play, by the way, but to hurry and bring the cows home before dark because there were bears and wolves and panthers in the woods. One day, I started early, earlier than usual, so I thought I did not need to hurry. There were so many things to see in the woods that I forgot the dark was coming. There were red squirrels in the trees, chipmunks scurrying through the leaves, and the little rabbits playing games together in the open places. Little rabbits, you know, they always have games together before they go to bed. I began to play. I was a mighty hunter, stalking the wild animals and the Indians. I played I was fighting the Indians until the woods seemed full of wild men. Then all at once, I heard the birds tweeter, twittering, good night. It was dusky in the path and dark in the woods. 
I knew I must get the cows home quickly, or it would be black night before they were safe in the barn. And I couldn't find the cows. I listened, but I couldn't hear their bells. I called, but the cows didn't come. I was afraid of the dark and the wild beasts, but I dared not go home to my father without the cows. So I ran through the woods, hunting and calling. All the time the shadows were getting thicker and darker and the woods seemed larger and the trees and the bushes all looked strange. I could not find the cows anywhere. I climbed up hills looking for them and calling and went down into the dark ravines, calling and looking. I stopped and listened for the cowbells. There was not a sound but rustling leaves. And then I heard loud breathing and thought a panther was out there in the dark behind me. But it was only my own breathing. My bare legs were scratched by the briars, and when I ran through the bushes, their branches struck me. But I kept on looking and calling, Suki, 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 I shouted with all my might, Suki. Right over my head, something asked, Who? My hair stood straight up on end. Who? Who? The voice said again. And then, how I did run. I forgot about the cows. All I wanted was to get out of the dark woods to get home. That thing in the dark came after me and called, Who? Who? I ran with all my might. I ran till I couldn't breathe. I still, I kept running. Something grabbed my foot and down I went. I jumped and then I ran. Not even a wolf could catch me. At last, I came out of the dark woods by the barn. There stood all the cows, waiting to be let in the bars. I let them in and ran to the house. My father looked up and said, Young man, what makes you so late? Been playing, by the way? I looked down at my feet, and I saw that one big toenail had been torn clean off. I had been so scared that I had not felt it hurt until that minute. Pa always stopped telling the story here and waited until Laura said, Go on, Pa, please go on. Well, Pa said, Then your grandpa went out into the yard and cut a stout switch, and then he came back into the house and gave me a good thrashing, so I'd remember to mind him after that. A, a big boy nine years old is old enough to remember to mind, he said. There's a good reason for what I tell you to do, he said. And if you do as you're told, no harm will come to you. <laughs> yes, yes, Pa, Laura would say, bouncing up and down Pa's knee. And then what did he say? He said, if you'd obeyed me as you should, you wouldn't have been out in the big woods after dark. You would have been, wouldn't have been scared by an old screech owl. So all that time, when the dad was a little boy, and he heard the hoo-hoo, it was an owl. I bet you guys figured that out, though. But it's funny because sometimes when we're in the middle of something, it can seem a lot scarier than it really is. Our feelings are real, and that's okay. And it's important to know that there's always, there's always a way to get through things. And we're going to get through all of this together. All right? All right, you guys, have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Memphis, can you say goodbye? Can you say goodbye?